So I think everyone knows this person's name, so I'm not going to mention it, and I'll let him pronounce it or Miss Blaine pronounce it because I will mispronounce the second name. And um, this is a real honor to have Goyle here because when Miss Blaine and I lived in Bain's house, now it's Bain's Hall, when we lived there, he was on the third floor, and we always used to joke saying, he's going to be an interior designer someday because we'd come back in the afternoon, Miss Blaine from coaching, and I'd come back from the office, and the commons room on the third floor, those of you who've been on the fl third floor, has been redesigned, but it would be rearranged all the time. And so um, today, Goyle is, a, um, is an interior designer and architect. But after Eagle Brook, after he graduated Eagle Brook in 1988, um, he went on to the Northfield Mount Hermon School. And um, after that, he went to Carnegie Mellon School. And then he went to, uh, got a degree at Yale University, where he, was the, where he got the top award for artistic recognition. Um, and then also the appeal and the application of the work that he does varies greatly. Aside from design industry focused outlets, uh, Goyle also has been featured on numerous TV shows, including Bravo's Top Designs, TLC's Trading Spaces, HGTV, White Room Challenge, and ABC The View. He has also appeared in many magazines for his, his work. And also, uh, he has received um, the Best Public Art Award from the Americans for the Arts Public Art Network. And he has also gained recognition for his design proposals for the National AIDS Memorial Competition, as well as the International Oklahoma City Memorial Design. Um, in 2014, uh, Goyle also served on the A AIA New York Design Award Committee and has taught and set um, at student reviews at Yale, where he got his graduate degree, uh, Catholic University, Pratt, Parsons, um, and multiple other schools. Um, also, as at Eagle Brook, he was a very good athlete in soccer, in wrestling, and also skied, and also a very talented uh, tennis player. Um, Goyle is now a CrossFit Level 1 certificate holder, and in 2018, he ranked number two in Thailand and at the CrossFit Open in the Masters Division, and in 2019, he ranked number one. I never never knew that number one and two mean, mean so much to you, but this is only, great. There were only 12 people competing. <laughs> <laughs> so there we go. I, I'm... Okay. So... Goyle's excited. Rachel and I, I know all the faculty, all of you are excited. This will be a, an um, outstanding presentation. And um, Goyle, welcome back to Eagle Brook, and thank you so much for being here. And the last time he was here was when his nephew uh, was here, Pun, I'm more be that, so his brother's son. So welcome thank back. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Um, so I, has, I haven't grown since I was here last. Uh, they gave me a box to stand on. Um, anyway, that's life, right? Um, so uh, this is me. I didn't know if I was going to be wearing a mask, so I thought I would just show a picture just in case you were curious. I want to start off with a game. I have a mystery prize in a box for anybody who can. Guess how old I am. Okay. You. No. Let me, let me do the next slide. Wrong! <laughs> this is why I can't be a teacher, because I really enjoy saying, wrong! Um, you were not right. The, right, the correct answer, acceptable, the only acceptable answer is 20 years old with 29 years of experience. Um, but I'll give this out anyway. Just come at the end, I have like five of them, I'll give it to you, okay? Um, I graduated in, 1990, in 1988. Um, and it is um, 2022 now, so that's 34 
years. So, um, so the caveat here for this presentation is that like my, um, my, my path is only one of the many possible paths that can happen after Eagle Brook, right? So like if you think of all of yourself as little turtles hatching in the ocean, you know, in, 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 on the beach, um, you never know what's, hap what's gonna happen. So um, I just wanna start by saying that because I, I don't want you to think that like everybody's gonna end up crazy like me. Um, but you know, never in my wildest dream would I thought that you know, I'd be standing here in front of you today because when I first started, okay, so this is my origin story. I came from Bangkok, Thailand, and, um, oh, so the mouse doesn't work, okay. So it's like on the opposite side of the world. It's like the farthest that you can go from, from where I started, right? Um, and when I came, I didn't even know English. I, I, I didn't speak a word of English. I was not exposed to art. Thailand was, you know, school was not about like art or anything. It was like a lot of test taking. So we didn't have those kinds of resources. Um, these were my letters from my mom that she sent to me when I was here. Um, it's like a, a big stack of them. Um, to me, they're like a physical representation of love. It's like an artifact with meaning. And thinking back to all of these things that I went through the box for for this presentation, I think, you know, I, I start to begin to understand why I do what I do. Oh. Oh, actually, um, this is a varsity soccer team, is not my team. Um, number one is my brother. He's always number one. Um, num uh, and, and the rest of the group are his friends. So number two is like the president of the class. Number three is like, you know, the vice president. Number four is like on the board of trustees, you know. You know. Uh, all the question mark people were the people who I were not 15 for sure because they're like, Stronger, amazing, and run really fast. Um, this is my team. So if you look at it in terms of like the Darwin um, survival of the fittest, I was not hashtag not the fittest. Um, but you know, I'm, I'm saying all of this, you know, so that you also know that you know a lot of things can happen within 34 years. So just wait 34 years. Um, and because my brother is so popular. And you know he was a year ahead of me in school. I had this shield of protection. So when somebody is kind of like looking at me the wrong way, I like look back and like they disappear. Um, it was amazing. It was a great experience. Um, this is my report card. Um, of course, I start with an A. Um, as, as I said, I didn't speak a word of English. And um, so, oh, I don't know. If they do they still write these report cards? Oh, they do. Okay. So you know they. The, the faculty here are really lovely because they spend a lot of time like writing like multiple paragraphs on how well you did in school and et cetera. So back then it was like that. Um, I was in English as a, as a second language class, and, um, but it, now that I'm looking at it, it's in quotation, so I'm like, some of the people were not. You know, they were native speakers. Um, this... <laughs> Okay, so I, all oh right, you, you're asking me. Okay, so it's a C plus, and it's in, it's in elective honor geometry, right? So I have to say that all this time, when somebody asked me, I said, oh, as an architect, you don't need to know math. You need to know geometry. I was really good at it. I got an A in geometry. Um, uh, that was incorrect, apparently. I went through my memory box. Um, but, but also, I'm telling you this so that you're not discouraged. Um, if your report card looks like mine, um, just go ahead and tell everybody your name. They won't know. Um, what am I doing now? I am an architect and interior designer. This is my, it's like the website, um, a more architecture, LLP. We do like interiors, we do commercial work, we do architecture, and we do, you know, a lot of crazy things. Um, uh, Instagram, let's just, you know, shamelessly plug. Um, at a more LLP, and there's two M's. So in case you want to know for later, and the LLP is like limited liability partnership. Okay, so um, or otherwise, just follow me. I'm, I'm Goyle for, at Goyle Friend, and I only post pictures of my dogs. Um, since since one of you, 
since one of you are my relative, there's one relative here that I have here because there's always, you know, my relative here going to the school. Um, I expect at least one new follower. <laughs> I live and work in New York City, which is a crazy place. It's completely packed. So spatially, New York is a very, you know, tight space and space is at a premium. And there is, um, so every inch has to be like considered, right? So that's when I come in, you know, I come in and I kind of like rip it all up, fix it. These are some of the work. Um, I love dogs. Okay. Um, I'm just going through the range. You know, this may mean nothing to you. I'm just showing you, you know. Oh, here's Snoopy office. We just finished Snoopy office. Um, your big Snoopy house. <laughs> love. Okay. Uh, this is the music um, office. Uh, and the model was party in the front, business in the back. Um, so this is the front. I'm not showing you the picture of the back. Um, you know, lots of crazy things. Look, neon, neon room. Um, we, we do architecture. Um, uh, this is like a little ice cream shop uh, in, in Bryant Park. Uh, the other one is a little, um, what do you call that thing? It's like a kiosk in the New York Public Library. We do architecture homes. You know, this is a, a house in um, Jackson Hole. Um, Palm Springs, uh, East Hampton, this one's being built, it's um, container houses. Um, unlike a lot of other architects, we don't shy away from decoration, so we don't, you know, we'll do wallpaper. We love it, right? Um, and oftentimes in our work, um, we have a lot of custom things that kind of support the larger ideas of our work. For example, in this picture, um, you know, we do the millwork, which is like the built-in cabinets, right? But they're fancy. Um, like the carpet we designed, um, we designed the coffee table, we designed that little pagoda in the back. Um, you know, we just like do everything. We designed rotating um, uh, bookshelves and fun chandeliers out of neons. Um, we used the CNC machines. I think you guys have this here, so you have the technology. Um, you know, we, we follow through um, from the big picture to the smaller elements in the interiors. Um, and we always find opportunities. Like this is one of the throwaway room in the a larger kind of project. And most of the time it was just be a bike storage. Um, we did, you know, we, we did a space that transformed into many different things, like a transformer. Um, we do exhibitions. We are published, Andy already said this. At this point you're like, what the? And you're like, <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm expecting that this is happening in your mind. Um, and for me, I have to be like, okay, and then reset. So in order to make this presentation a little bit more kind of like applicable to like what you might be interested in, um, I have decided to make this about how I became an architect. Um, how the heck did I get here? In case you want to try this at home. So when I first started, um, this is the Thai letters, right? Um, the Thai characters, we have 46. Uh, we have um, 30 vowels. I don't know, you know, English only have five. We have 30. Amazing. Um, but then when I came here, I had to like learn a whole new kind of like way of thinking, like the like the ABCs. You know, like I have to learn all, all new. Uh, another language that I learned new was the the sort of like artistic language. So back in my day, we had um, art classes, and I took all of them. So we had six. Um, the top one is silk screening. The one next to it is stained glass. We have oil painting. We have drawing on the right side of the brain, um, which is amazing. If they have that here now, you gotta take it. It like change your life. Um, we have shop. We have pottery. But mostly, I was really young, so we did a lot of like we roll a lot of, a lot of snake and kind of like made it like. So basically, we made a lot of ashtrays, but we didn't smoke. Um, I, this is the first image that I made for. Um, for my soak screen, you have to find like a two, you know, a two color image. And I was like, oh, this Phoenix, this bird of fire is awesome. Picked it, uh, did it. Uh, this is not the original. I, I couldn't find my original. Um, but later on, I found out that it was the logo for the American Institute of Architects. I actually have this pin now. Um, another thing, you know, that Eagle Brook kind of like gave me is like, for example, like random things. Like if you look at my report card, um, the, my floor parent, my advisor, is Mr. Kimball, right? Mr. Kimball went to Yale. He was the photographer from Yale. And when I went to Yale, I realized how difficult that was. They only accept like six people a year. You have to like try out. I think you have to sing and dance. I don't know. 
but here I am, you know, I, I also ended up at Yale, and I also did photography, but I mean, you know, on the side. I did ar architecture, but I used photography as like a minor. Um, oh, this is my friend swimming in the swimming pool. Not Jesus. <laughs> just in case you, you, you just, just in case any of you may have that coming to Jesus moment, <laughs> not Jesus. So, you may ask, what is architecture school like? So you're gonna make make a lot of new friends. You're gonna make you know see a lot, meet a lot of eccentric people. This is my old professor, um, who kind of like changed my life. Um, but you know you have to discern from like crazy you know like people who you think are eccentric and like people who are genius. He was truly a genius. So this is my favorite assignment of his. What we have to do is we have to find a twig, dip it in ink. You can't look on the page. It's all these rules. You can't look on the page, and you can't lift up your 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 twig, and you have to draw, and not and not you know like you have to see with your eyes and draw with your hands without seeing. Um, it was like you know I, he was teaching us a new way of looking at the world. Basically, he was teaching us like a new language, right? So it's like if you're concerned about if things look accurate, that's one way, right? But another way is like you know. To just to look and to touch with your with your eyes, is is a it's a new form of language. It's much more physical. Um, you know, we've done other drawings. Like for example, like the dinosaur. Like you think it looks like a dinosaur bone, right? We drew the dinosaur bone, but what we did in our mind was whatever's white is forward, and then we were physically pushing deeper into space. So like the darker part is like far back, the medium is like closer, like. So now you begin to learn like a new language, right? Of course we did normal things. Um, and then we learned perspective, um, but the perspective we learned was less about seeing and making things look accurate, but more about the understanding of the underlying geometry of constructed environment. So this is very similar to like learning a new language, like the ABCs, like what are the ABCs of drawing a perspective, right? So we learn all of that. And we had really good examples because we do a lot from Beaux-Arts, um, architecture, which has Roman arches. And in Roman arches, basically, uh, it's a series of squares and half squares. Like, if you, if you need to draw a circle, you can, you can draw a square, and you can put a circle in the middle, right? So a half circle is like a half square, like on the top part. So Beaux-Arts like that. Like, that's the secret. Like, you know, building blocks. So if you can draw a square, you can draw anything. And not only you can draw it, you can understand it. For example, I went to a tourist site, like you know, an architect -y thing. Um, and instead of drawing what I saw, I drew what was there. Like I, I unlocked, I unlocked the, um, I unlocked the structure of it. I don't know. It's too crazy, right? Okay. Um, so having said that, you know, you need to know a lot of geometry. I'd like to officially partition for an A, for for great change. Um, in my geometry class, <laughs> I really thought I got an A. <laughs> I already told everybody, Andy, <laughs> you need to help me. <laughs> um, so I was uh, far ahead of my time. This is social distancing. Um, I also learned other languages, like how to make sculpture, right? So this is social distancing. I made um, a mask that was like, you know, I was like rebellious. So like the mask had like hair that sticks out, no one can get close to you. Like it's like a spatial thing, you know? Um, you know, kind of like figure out different ways to draw. Like I, I drew with dry pens, but I slashed that at, at the drawing like a real artist. Um, also, we learned like the typical kind of like the architecture um, standard drawing stuff. You, you guys know about plans and sections? All right, so like a plan is like when you cut um, the space like at a height and then you look down. So like, you know, the walls are in black and then, you know, Maybe there's, okay, anyway. So we have to learn the, like the, the typical convention of plans and sections. But what I, you know, um, when I was in school, we also learned how to present. Like in, in this project, it was about a movement in space and a leap, like a mental leap, right? So like I, I felt like the way that I organized the drawing also had a, an impact on how I communicate my ideas. Uh, this is SketchUp. It's the first generation, like 30 years ago. Like I was like the first gang that did it. It took like all night to render like that one. <laughs> now it takes like five minutes. And I think you guys do SketchUp, right? In, in, in Christo's class? I don't know, okay. 
you guys are not very um, participatory. Um, of course, we made models, um, like uh, hand models, like uh, out of cardboard to express like our ideas and our designs. And it's like some of the funnest things that 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 we do, um, like like um, like expressing things in three Ds. It's like once you learn how to do it, it's it's, it's magic. Um, this is the next few slides is one of my last studio projects at Yale. Um, the project is a proposal to make a design for a cathedral in Los Angeles. So I am not a Catholic, I'm a Buddhist, so I had to learn a lot about Catholicism. But the one thing that I was struck by is the idea that pain somehow equates to like holiness. Like that's why they have all these saints that die in many special ways. Um, the one that I liked was Saint, Sebast Saint Sebastian, who um, he, he got killed by arrows. So um, the picture on the, wait, your left, uh, the picture on the left, right, is the way typical, like, artists would, would, would depict. The one in the middle is a dance. The one on the right is my project, is architecture. But, you know, as it translated, I made sure that the sphere became a big part of how um, the story is being told. In this case, it's, like, literally supporting the building, the structure. Um, and you know, essentially, it's the vessel which holds like, the Catholic ritual of mass. You know, Catholic they do mass, they sing, and this one, you know, would be lifted and sing out into the city. Um, also, you know, I superimposed the imagery of the Bible verses of the apocalypse. Um, you know, when a city descends from the heaven to receive the devout, and in the, in the description of the Bible itself, like it said things like you know, a crystal you know, thing made of blood and, you know, et cetera. It's like very gory, it's very cool. If you have a chance, you know, try to read some. Um, of course, we did a lot of models. We were not like models, like, you know, New York Fashion Week, but we did other kinds of models like this. Um, and in fact, like that tradition follows me to, to my very first office. Like we had a wall with just models. Uh, this is me and my partner, Tom. Um, oh, and, um, Next to me is Lily. You see that? Yeah, she's in the picture too. She's always behind me. Um, so then after that, I, you know, the typical path is to join a big firm, so I did that. I worked for Robert Stern, an architect, who is, um, he was actually my dean at Yale. He picked a few of us. He was an you know, um, extremely talented uh, historian of New York. Like He knows every single inch of New York City. He's an amazing person to learn from. This is me with him working on a project, of course, it's always at night because, you know, we always stay late um, because we love what we're doing. It's like a party, like late, you know. Um, this, is the, um, this is the last project that I did uh, for Bob, which is a quilt museum. It was a big competition that we won. Um, I was a lead designer and we get to build it. So this is the final result. But going back, just to kind of like try to show you what the language that I, you know, other kind of languages that I learned since Eagle Brook is, like, for example, in design, like, we look at quilting, like how quilt is made. So, you know, in, in quilting, you always have a backing, you have a batting in the middle, like the blue piece, and then you have the applique, right? It sounds stupid, but, you know, we made a building out of that. So if we turn that into a building's diagram, and then, you know, that there is a picture of a plan that we kind of like moved around and we made models. And here's me and Tom. It's the only project we worked on together. We kicked ass. Um, <laughs> was that? That's not okay. <laughs> um, so of course we made a lot of models. Like all of this was done within like you know two months. We just like pop them out. Um, we just kept on making models and study it into all the different ways and. Um, until we get to the final model and, you know, the final building. Okay. Whew. I have to pause because I'm going really fast, guys. You, you got to like, you know. Um, so sometimes professional life is influenced by personal life. So there's two events that happened to me during working, you know, for the big firm that changed my life. One is a fire that I had in my own apartment on my moving day. So this is a picture of that day in the new, you know, in the apartment. The garbage bags, it's the stuff that I had left. Um, all of my memory was charred. They were transformed by fire. 
the artifact of my life that I carry around for years, gone. But you know, it made me think about the kind of stuff that surrounds me, like in my home. It, it, it changed what a home meant to me as a designer. And you know, I, I, it changed the way that I look at architecture. The second one happens a few months later. It smells the same for my kitchen window. You know, in architecture, we always talk about, you know, the special part of architecture is that we build things that last. You look at the pyramids, you look at the ruins, you look at the Roman, you know, buildings and the Greek temples. Um, and I never thought that like a building could fall down like that. So um, it made me cha you know, change the way that I think about the world. And the one word that came up to me, you know, that, that, that rises in my, you know, that, that's in my, my brain, you know, that whole time was responsibility. And responsibility, I'm not an English major, English is my second language, but because of that simplisticness, responsibility is an ability to respond. So what do you need? You need the ability. And, you know, I have been trained for like, at that point, like 12 years or whatever to, to, to have this ability. Um, and then the second thing you need is you need to be, you need to take action and respond. And then during that time, you know, there was a lot of anti, you know, Im immigrant sentiment after 9-11. People needed somebody near and tangible to blame. So here comes Tiananmen Museum, came into the picture. They were looking for artists to do their storefront, you know, to do a, a site-specific art in their storefront that talks about immigration. And, and so we, you know, um, oh, this is the Tenement Museum. They, they kind of, you know what the Tenement Museum is? Like a housing for like, you know, ancient people. Um, they're like super tiny. Like back then when people come from another country, they like, um, they work and they live in these like little rooms. Well, the Tenement Museum preserved these spaces. So, you know, the generations following can see what, you know, what kind of things people had to go through to be here and appreciate it. So um, we, you know, um, in college, you make lifelong friends. So Tom, I, and my friend John, who's Turkish. And you know, in, it's funny because t in Turkish, John, you spell with a C, right? C-A-N. Um, so uh, like all of our friends, we call him Candy. Um, so <laughs> anyway, uh, so we, we, we proposed a project. Um, and so we proposed to do a marab um, in the storefront. And, and a marab, uh, if for those who, who don't know, is in, in Muslim. Um, it is uh, an Islamic prayer niche. So like people have to pray five times a day, but they have to point at Mecca, so there's a special compass. But the marab in, um, in a mosque is, it's like a, a mark, you know, a, a wall that people can point to so they know where, where to pray to. Um, so what we've done is that we thought that we would quilt together um, this marab using like the materials that we have around us. Um, and you know, we wanted to quilt a story of commonality in, in all the different religions together to create a different whole of a unified whole. Of course, we used the computer program. Do you guys have this technology here? Um, back in my days, we don't have the SketchUp. Um, and of course, we made lots of models. Um, and in the end, oh, oh this, is the, um, this is a scale like map of the, how we would lay it all out. Um, the other thing that, uh, of interest is that um, we use wire to, instead of sewing, with, with um, threads, we are not seamstress, we're architects. So we sew it together with the materials that we know, which is the wire ties. They are um, these things that, um, electrical ties, you know, they, 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 they used to handcuff people with, you know, like in the, in the movies? Well, we use that in, in, our, in the construction industry too, so it was like a two for one. So we use that for the double meaning, um, and this is, that thing, uh, the marab, um, displayed uh, in the storefront in lower Manhattan. Um, so we kind of invented a language based on a question that we had based on inclusion, right? Um, anyway, another big museum, the Carnegie Museum in Pittsburgh called and they wanted one, so we installed them you know, there too. 
uh, you made, made a special one for them uh, in the hall of sculpture, which is the, the European, you know, um, ideal kind of uh, temple. And we put this Muslim thing in. It was kind of interesting. Um, the light there was much better. Okay, I know you guys, it's like a downer. I, I can see that I'm losing you. It's not all serious. We also had fun in our responsibility. Um, so we started a band. We, um, so I have to frame this project first with, um, we were very young. We were much younger than we are now and we were playing around. Um, and this helped us come in terms with the power that we have within ourselves to communicate, right? So like, you know how music industry, some people are like not really like amazing, like in, um, they're not really talented, they were just produced. So we were like commenting on that. It was an art project. So we started our band called Progress Toward Rank. Uh, this is our first CD cover, Process of Elimination. We have three songs. Um, and these are the different uh, in musical instruments that we play, uh, the computer, the mini chang, which uh, Natalie's holding, uh, that thing, and then the cello. But we designed the, um, the instruments just to kind of throw you off, kind of like, you know, we just want you to think about what that may sound like because we don't make any music. We were just posing. Um, and then the AAA, they were looking for an architect band. And so we wrote in, you know, and they called like within 15 minutes. Uh, and and we, we, we weren't ready for that. We, we thought that we were just playing around. Um, like, we, like in our letter, when we sent to them, we said things like, you know, like we were like really pretentious. We were like, you know, we need strict humidity control, you know, of the performance space um, in order to ensure optimum uh, expression of our instruments, tonal color. I don't know what that is. Um, in particular, the mini chang. We don't know what the mini chang sound like. <laughs> We've never like played it. Um, but they bought it and they kind of like, they called us and like, oh, okay, when can you play? You know, like what venue do you want? I, I don't remember how that all end. I don't recommend doing this, um, do not lie. Um, it's, <laughs> it's not a thing I promote, but it, for me it was an art project. So at that moment we kind of learned this power of representation. We were representing ourselves in an image that people understood as musician. Um, it was fake language, but truly, um, you know, for us, it was a, an artistic expression. Um, it was an art piece. It may not be music, but it was art. Anyway, progression. So during that time, this is like way in the very beginning of reality TV, um, you know, talent competition. You know, you have like Top Chef, Project Runway, et cetera. So I got on um, Top Design. Um, it was an interior design competition that we had never done interior at that point, by, by that point, it only did architecture. Um, I see myself in, um, uh, you know, on, uh, on the billboard, it was kind of amazing, kind of like really weird to see yourself, look at yourself, you know, back at you. Um, uh, especially when you Google American renovating TV show, like, you know, if you just, just look at this list, like none of them Look, it's the kind of handsome that I look, you know what I mean? <laughs> they may be a different kind of handsome, but you know, um, so it, it, it was great. Uh, these are, you know, I, I went on a, a few shows and you know, did all these things. Um, it was amazing. Uh, I wanna show you my first room that I did for Trading Spaces. And so Trading Spaces, if you don't know, is like an old, ancient, 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 like first reality TV show. Um, and you have to make a room in two days and with $1,000 with one carpenter. So at that point, I was like, okay, so the video camera like captures you walking around. Um, it's kind of like similar to a photography kind of camera where, you know, like I, I did photography before. So in my mind, photography was this black box of silence, right? Like if you, if, if you imagine that you are the camera and you can't speak, how do you communicate an idea? How do you, how, how do you say words? Well, with, with this new kind of camera that capture moving images, it's not silent anymore. So um, I thought, wow, you know, the potential of this is to show process. So let, you know, um, because it shows things in clips. And then I thought, okay, the standard size is in building materials at Home Depot because you, know, you never know where your room is gonna pop up that you have to do. Um, materials come in standard sizing because of shipping. For example, um, you know, like 
I designed a headboard, uh, shelving, et cetera. I made, um, these things are called the cut sheets. But in my cut sheet, I didn't waste anything. Like the, the beige part is the um, plywood, which is uh, four by eight. And then I cut, every, you know, every piece is cut a certain way to maximize on it and then fold it to create like a piece of furniture. So I did that. This is the first room, super fun. But also, you know, it started from making a model, as always for me. Uh, after you have like a, a little bit of um, visibility, people ask you to do things. Um, I was involved with, for a little bit, um, uh, an organization called Dining by Design, which is um, uh, put out by um, the Design Industry Foundation Fighting AIDS. Like, it's called DIFA, right? And Tom's gonna explain it in a video. He explains better than me. Um. Hi, you Hi, guys. We. Thanks for coming. Hi. So glad to have you. Yes, yes, yes. What is the Dining by Design? Well, this is a flagship fundraising event for right. DIFA, Design Industries Foundation Fighting right. AIDS. We have 42 different designers here, and each one is given the same canvas, a 10 by 10 by 10 square. So now you say, okay, here's your little space. Make it work. Make it work for 10 people. That's all they Make have. It yeah, so basically that's a, that's a premise. So, you know, a 10 by 10 box, and you kind of like have to do all these crazy things. It's like a, an Olympics for designers, right? Everybody kind of try to outdo each other every year. Uh, uh. This is one of our years that we, we, we did. Um, and it was one of our first year. We did it based on these things called um, like the old time phones. You, you guys know what this is? You have to like put your finger through the circle and you spin it to dial. And I, I, I put a reminder to tell you that um, you can't text on these. <laughs> There's no texting. Um, but uh, so, so basically um, the, the piece is called Call to, uh, to Action. And so basically the premise is that like, you know, my way of communicating is to the most, you know, like I, I wanted to communicate it to the lowest common denominator, to everybody. So they understand that if you, you know, there's a call for you, if you answer, you know, your responsibility, um, you can change lives. So that was like the premise. Of course, we, we did models. You know, I always have to show you my process because, you know, I think that it's something that you have accessibility to here. Um, and then connecting the dots. So, you know, like, uh, so let's just put that in the back. I do all these, you know, dining by design. At the same time, HGTV has this game show with prize money. I'm like, prize money, okay. Um, and you have to do a 10 by 10, you know, the, the premise is similar. It's a 10 by 10 cube, and then you have these furniture, uh, and then um, they will give you a theme that you have to, to, to work around. So that, that's a challenge. And it's kind of like an out, out of the box sort of like design thing. Um, so I have a few clips coming, but um, I have to say that like for me, the challenge was I think really fast in design. Like I speak really fast, I think really fast. Like in design, because you know, like my design muscle is like Arno, right? Really strong. And so I have to like make sure that like I bring people along. Um, so I had to try really hard to slow down and um, like I can't write the whole, I, you know, like I, I, I can't have the whole no novel written in my head before I, you know, before somebody read the first word, right? So um, I learned how to slow down and trust the process and let things develop. So a part of like the, um, the language of, of, the, of the TV stuff is, um, it's kind of like you have to carry a story to an unknown end basically. So that's the challenge. So a few clip, clips coming up. First one to explain the, pro, uh, the, 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 the premise of the show. Welcome to the White Room Challenge. You've just entered the ultimate designer's playground. It's really dramatic, right? If you can let your mind run wild and think outside the box, you can walk out of here with $10,000. When I start the clock, you each need to grab six unmarked paint cans and bring them back to your rooms. The colors inside will be your room's color palette. You'll have... So basically, this is the, called the color challenge. They didn't give you anything. They just gave you like six colors. You have to do something with those six colors, but you don't know what you're doing. 15 getting. hours to design your room, and you'll be judged on the clarity of your overall concept and how creatively you showcase all your colors. When I start the challenge, grab your six gallons of paint and see what you've got. Your challenge starts now. 
actually have 15 hours to do this. Okay. Peach. I don't know my concept. So I start my model. Making a model instead of drawings helps me kind of generate my concept. I, I know that making a model at this critical time may seem like a strange choice to everybody, but it is what I do. It's who I am. I think everyone else is looking at Goyle and thinking, what the heck are you doing? That's this challenge is a color challenge where I could not pick my own color. I think Goyle with his pastels might be in the most trouble. That's I made a room in a half scale, and it helps me kind of generate my concept. As I'm looking at the model, my concepts start to come together. I want to make a room about love. How about that? All right. My idea is that the color that are so different would come together and work as one. Okay, so at this point, let me take, explain to you. Welcome to oh, the white. Please. Let me explain to you some behind the scenes stuff, okay? So one of the competitors behind the scene was calling me derogatory name the whole freaking time. So I was like really pissed. And then I was like, okay, so th this cannot be a negative experience for me. You know, I'm not gonna like, you know, whatever. So for me, I, I didn't reply to him in words, but I, re I used the language of design as a response to him. And actually, you know, it was, wasn't really for him at that point. It was really for me and everybody else. Like, I just wanted to express, you know, my feelings about America and like how the different group of people can come together with different backgrounds and, and kind of like, I, I just want to talk about my ideal America of people working together, like without calling people derogatory names. So my idea, sorry, very bad sketch. I did it in two minutes. Um, the sofa, I was gonna split it and lift one side up and use, with a ramp, so you sit on one side, sit on a ramp. And then um, the, the sofa actually is, is the love seat because it only fits two people. Um, it's broken. And then my thought was that when people sit on it, they're kind of like, they're kind of sitting close together. Um, and of course the color kind of like, you know, swirl and come together and you know, amazing. Um, so that's what I was doing. Uh, this is a clip of um, the ramp coming in. Right, should we try it? See what it looks like? So this one is over here. What is this ramp you got going on? Is this a skateboard challenge? Goyle, what's happening? Here, oh, I, I made a model. I oh, there you, go. you made a model? I made a model. What's what happening? is going on? The couch looks broken. Yes, it is. Is that on purpose? Yes, it is on purpose. It has a function. OK. Oh, let, let, let's sit together. You want to sit together? Yes. Oh, I'm totally game for that. i my trap. All right, do you need M help? Many girls on HGTV <laughs> will be very upset. Please come to my room. It's OK to sit on? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> there we are. Okay, so basically what I did here was I used architecture to like communicate an idea, right? So like it's something that like affect you personally, like you know, like your physical, your, it, it affects you. Um, and then this next clip is like, you know. We want to hang this back up there. I have, to show you how there. The whole thing I have cable. Uh, I'll go back here and tell you. Goyle, you are running around like crazy back. time. That's right. Asking questions. What is going on here? Well, I, I needed to, to intensify this moment right here. OK. The, the whole thing is that, um, you know, it brings the scale of the room down and forces you to really go in and sit into it. Right. See, the architecture here dictates your movement into the space, if you will. Great. Just make sure that we you sell it to us just like that when, when you're in front of the judges. <laughs> Looks great. Thank you very much. I'm impressed. Professor's time. I need to start to put all the finishing touches together. I want to suggest an activity for the lover in my room, and that might be drinking wine. Yeah, so I know it's a small a thing, secret. but you know, I feel like it'll really complete my room. I am just in awe. Like the tiny little touches, like that flower was just ingenious. Okay, so that's the end of the room, and then the we want to hang this. The next one is a judging. Um, it's really suspenseful. <laughs> they have like dim Welcome lines. back, guys. We've had a chance to look closely at your rooms. I have to say, collectively, this is some of the strongest rooms we've had all season. Beautiful work, great use of color. But only one of you can win $10,000. Now it's time for each of you to present your room. Why don't you start, Goyle? So, um, 
I kind of selected some very not so amazing colors at first glance. But then I thought about what a metaphor for color can be. And in my concept, I wanted um, all the colors to kind of come together and work together toward one goal. So the, the main idea for my room is a room for lovers. And I've done this in a very graphic way. The floor actually kind of lift up the couch so that when two people sit together, they're forced, like gently, to nudge close together. <laughs> It really is elegant. It's beautifully finished. You've got an incredible concept there that's completely out of the box, but you actually attach some meaning to it as well. I loved your background of actually bringing two people together. Yeah. Because I'm thinking, why did you split the couch? Was it art for art's sake, or was there a purpose, and you made it purposeful? This is, so. There's a function, yeah. Yeah, I think the concept is super creative. I think it borders on genius. Thank you very much. Okay, so that was my review. So basically, I won. Okay. Um, <laughs> that wasn't it. Okay, so what did they do with the money? <laughs> so we won money. Okay. Um, so this is what I did. So now, just think back, like a few slides back. I, I did the dining by design, right? I did, did that event, which is, a, which is a 10 by 10 space, very similar. So this was a, my dining by design that year. I had more money. <laughs> I you know, used fancy material. I, I, I can pay for more laser time. So you know, like outside of Ecobrook, you have to pay for your laser time. <laughs> but when you're here, you can cut as many pieces of paper as you want. So I would take advantage of that. I had to go on a TV show to get the laser time. Um, and you know, this is the, the table that we did. It was like cloud, it was light and happy. And then, you know, in Dining by Design, after the battle ends, everybody trash everything. Well, with these volunteers um, at my nearest um, church uh, in, in Brooklyn, we install what we made uh, in, in their children's room. You know, and you know, we, we kind of changed the room uh, for the better for the kids, you know what I mean? Um, it was a good way to, a to apply my skill and kind of like connect the dots, right? Um, we also color outside the lines, like we do things that um, you may not expect an architect to do, like we did sets. Um, of course, you know, we, did, we, we made a lot of models. Um, and when they didn't believe we could do it, we made like full-size models out of paper. You can do this too. And we put it in, in, in the studio so um, everybody became on board like right away. Um, it was amazing. Um, we also did um, Whoopi, you know, Whoopi's um, wreath uh, a few times. Of course, also lasers. You have the lasers, okay? Um, these are some other things that we've done with the lasers. Uh, we do her ornaments every year. This is only a few, I can't find the rest. Um, this is this year's ornament. It was super fun, I really like it. Fun, right? But you know, like the the way that we okay. So we also do our own ornaments, and there's always a house. And the way that we do our, our ornament is that like it's like one piece of metal that is folded onto themselves, so there's no waste, right? So let me show you some process. For example, this is what the unicorn year. So the the left side image um, are the first uh, two renditions. It's just like done really roughly, right? And then folded it. And you know, like the red dash line up top is like the unicorn. So whatever it protrudes out, it gets cut away from that piece. So because you know, they, it's like so I can stamp it next to each other and not waste anything. Um, so we make quick quick models, and then you know these are the rest of um, you know the family of, of the ornaments we've been making. Oh my god! And I know that I'm running out of time, so I'm going to go really fast at the end. Um, so because of all of that. We were able to start our firm and kind of like grow it. So while we're doing that, we're doing like real architecture, real interior work. You know, we do, these are some of the before and after. Like this one, like literally was haunted. We had to get like, you know, a priest to, to come first before we can enter. Um, you know, just lots of before and after, right? And, and oftentimes it's like, there's a mismatch in what exists and what they want it to be. And, uh, you know, it, you just have to go with the flow, man. Um, this is one of our most um, favorite projects, uh, like the, the biggest 
kind of like uh, reveal. Um, so basically, it, 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 this building that was the parish, um, and it turned into uh, apartment buildings. But in New York, when, when it, things turn into apartment buildings, they want more floors because you know, they can get more money. So by the time, you know, like the dash lines are, are the floor lines that they kind of put in, something like this. But by the time they get to the top, like you can't even look out the window, right? So what we did was we studied the project um, in section. This is before and after. So on the before, you can see that um, above that room on the bottom there um, the, is the red uh, color, and that's the bathroom. You notice that there's a lot of spaces not being used to the left because you can't even access it, and, it, and the skylight is like shining onto the floor of the bathroom. And the right-hand side is the after. We move the same mass up and allow light to come in. So this is the same picture when, after we blew it out. And then this is the final product. So to show the final product in place, so you can see like that's where the column is. That's where the ceiling used to be. We, we of course, use you know, regular architectural kind of like drawing styles, exons. Um, and then you know, we do material palette. Material palette is a part of it too, um, kind of like picking material to kind of like reinforce your concept. Like you know, not, all the, not all the pieces can be a star, right? It's like you, know, you gotta have some background players and you know, some, some punches, you know? Um, and then also, like similar to having a verbal conversation with another person, you kind of have to have a conversation with the space. Um, for example, like when we uncover it, we found out um, that underneath is all these really beautiful metal work, and it was like hand forged, like from years, you know, from, year, from, from, from like long time ago. Like they don't do this anymore. They haven't done this in 50 years. And so we preserved it, and when we select our um, furnishing, we thought about how can we have a conversation with this. So you know, we followed that clue, cue, and kind of like went with it. Um, uh, we also use computer model. This is SketchUp again. This is the final product, SketchUp, and a final product right next to it. So you can kind of see that like you know, there's a process in what we do. These are some of the uh, uh, images. I'm almost done. Um, and then like for example, we 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 are always you know, paying attention to detail. So on the right. Right, yeah, on the right bottom, the, it, the wood steps, right? Those are all drawers. So like small details, like we think about. Um, the countertop can extend out, so that's another fun detail. Like there's a lot of fun things you can do. Um, and the window that you can't look out of, we built a platform so you can look out the window. And that kind of like defined another space as an office, but also um, we built a day bed so that, you know, it could be like a place where you play guitar or you can dump your, you know, visitor to sleep in there. Um, we did, we <laughs> just dumped them like that. Okay. Um, <laughs> we also designed the carpet, for example. So the carpet here is the story of, of, of um, our client's life. Like these are all the different places he has been. Um, on the right hand side, um, the uh, Gothic arches, because he loved Gothic architecture, we made a rug based on that. Um, you know, these are some of the other images. So. Um, my conclusion, I'm concluding. Um, the si uh, so, so for us, like uh, for me, design is a powerful tool. It can be political, it can be problem solving, it could be performative, it could say things that, that you, you, know, that, that, that you wanna say. Um, it's like learning English, right? Um, and so I feel like I'm here, it's full circle. I really appreciate all the teachers um, and the resources that I was exposed to at Eagle Brook because um, I was exposed to all kinds of new languages, not just English. You, you thought I only learned English here, I didn't. Um, and this is the place where it all started for me. Um, and I hope that this can do the same, you know, this, this place can do the same for you. Just look out for all those opportunities. You may not even realize it. Like, you know, my advisor went to Yale, I went to Yale. Like, I mean, like crazy, crazy things, right? Um, yeah, I can't, stand, I, I can't believe that I'm standing here. Um, the last time I was here, I didn't even, like, I, you know, like I said, I didn't speak the language, um, but now language is everywhere in my world. Um, and I hope that I you know, made you more interested in, uh, in architecture and design. Thank you.